today's abandoned video, we explore the massive abandoned Sion Mills in the centre of Northern Ireland. Dating back to the 1600s, the historic property produced corn and flax over centuries in use before falling into administration in 2011. Since then, the various buildings on site have suffered arson attacks and natural deterioration, leaving them shells of their former purposes. Join us as we venture within the facility to discover what remains today. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Last time we asked the question, do you think leisure sites or industry has a more impactful closure? We had many detailed responses but have selected this one from Naked Hardware, stating that industrial demise is worse because of job loss and economic struggles in the area. Both aren't ideal but we totally agree that industrial mothballing causes much more devastation to communities that lived around these factories. This week we are asking, what was your favourite video that we released in 2021? Let us know below with your reasons to possibly feature in our next upload. Midway through our summer trip to Ireland this year, we set out to explore the only industrial location we planned to visit over the course of the week. Before us lied the imposing Sion Mills, a rare Italianate structure that was founded in 1835. The towering property peaks at five storeys, made with yellow and red bricks that were locally gathered. Yeah. The land of the factory was chosen deliberately by a group of notorious architects due to its riverside position as well as the mill dominance centuries before this one was built. On the grounds the earliest known was a series of coal mills in the 1640s. As you can see, since closure, vandals had struck hard on the unprotected complex, leaving few window panes intact and access points everywhere you looked. For us, it was no problem getting inside each building, and in no time we were in what was probably the most important one of the mill. Wow, this is so cool, with all the overgrowth. This would have been a hydroelectric turbine hall. The turbines look so dated, you can see the old gauges that remain on a small console. And there's a gantry crane too. Here are some of the gauges for the turbines. They're very old, just like everything here. It's really peaceful in this building with the sound of the river outside that was obviously useful for its purposes. Tactically placed besides the River Morn, it was very useful for importing materials into the site and transporting finished produce to the coast. In later years, the hydroelectric plant was constructed, which would power the entire factory, the river able to provide a thousand water horsepower. Nowadays, the small building's position has been costly for its upkeep, with water slipping in between the tiles and bricks, causing plant growth and the thatched wooden ceiling collapsing steadily. Soon these unique turbines may disappear forever. Believe it or not, this structure was one of the main reasons we went off track to see Sion Mills, as it is something you wouldn't see today. Disregarding the architecture of the space itself, the curvy turbines are lost to square bland ones, making this scene one of a kind. Thank you. 
Next up, we headed to a barn looking building, possibly a converted coal mill that had lasted hundreds of years. One thing for sure is you don't have to worry about access for this place. It's wide open, absolutely everywhere. This is already quite nice though. You'd think it'd be more trashed or have a bit more graffiti, but some really nice decay and some old brickwork. Different colours make me think these are toys, but they definitely could be something else, I'm not too sure. The decay in this place is so cool. There's grass growing. And we're not even in the main building, just a small outbuilding. Look at the ferns in this room. There's a few rusting machines that I think are weaving equipment here. Following suit, with most of the locations we came across in Ireland, the decay was extraordinary. Foliage had reclaimed control of the ground and was painting the walls a vibrant green. Apart from a few machines, that was all that building had to offer, so we moved on to the main building, entering into its obliterated weaving sheds. Definitely, I mean... It's such extensive damage. There's hardly any roof in the entire place. Navigating the floor here is just a nightmare. There's so much to look out for. It's a mixture of um, roof slates, pipes, and child bits of wood. You can clearly see the fire damage in this room. Anything wooden was taken ablaze and the only things that are left is the stone and metal. But it's all charred. Oh, there's some stuff in there. This looks like random chunks of wood. Some boxes too. I imagine this place was left um, with a fair bit in, judging by machines that we've seen. But a lot of it's been stripped out. Just look like storage with all the shelves, this area. There's a nice blue colour scheme. I have a feeling this would have been a boiler house. Wow, look at the vines. There's even a tree growing. I found myself on an external staircase somehow, just looking for a way up to the second floor. I assume the workers didn't have to go through this every day. The view from up here is going to be really nice. It's nice sometimes, we do a lot of intense infiltrations, but this one is definitely more relaxed. We can just take in the view. In 
2011, the owners of the mill went into administration, shutting down the facility and causing loss of almost 300 jobs. They had threatened mothballing the site for years, however, earlier cases suggesting that their shareholders weren't providing enough finance to keep Sion Mills running. After neglecting the huge premises, it was sold to a local lottery winner of a million pounds, but unfortunately the arson attacks began to strike. Separate to casual vandalism and copper thieving, multiple fires have occurred on site as recently as 2019. In that scenario, a blaze broke out at 6pm, lasting until 10pm, requiring four fire engines to extinguish it. This seems to happen often, but little has been done to protect the historic facility. Our experience was extremely simple, so a vandal would see no change, old cameras that we spotted weren't operating, and fences had been pulled down all over, removing the point. This is much better, you can see the mill's true colour scheme. I like the blue pillars. Not sure what these tubes are though, but there's a damn lot of them. The decay is really nice on this one, but it's missing its tubes. Instead, you've got these small rolls of uh, cloth. On these floors, spinners would be located that would twist and turn the yarn for linen. Sadly, no machines remained, and the empty holes seemed to represent the building's newfound lack of creation. Someone filled in the crossword. I don't know if that was an explorer or one of the workers a long time ago. They were all filled in. It must be the workers. I'll take that back. I've done the word search though. Opposite the main building, a three-storey structure features an active substation in a closed-off lower floor. It was rebuilt in 1828 and was the last of the former coal mill to be restored. Getting to it was proving to be difficult, despite the many walkways and bridges to help workers move from one to the other. Currently we're Maneuvering around the Heras on the wrong side of the river because there's a palisade fence blocking our entry to one of the buildings. And we think this one might have some machines in it. The overgrowth in here looks amazing. Wow. Oh, we I finally got a machine that's mostly intact. Looks really old. Yeah, there's two actually. This is a really nice seam of the ferns. The ivy hanging down as well. Yeah. This very dated machine turned out to be all that was left in this part of the mill. Afterwards we had to rush off to reach a campsite for the evening, so we briskly concluded the exploration here. It 
it felt like a special experience to wander around such an iconic factory with no real boundaries. Each building seemed to have its own detail and individuality that made them equally as fascinating to see as the rest. However, the feeling was rather bittersweet. The lack of security has been the reason for mass destruction and robbery for over a decade. It is also the factor that has meant that there are no plans for Sion Mills currently, except for gradual deterioration by pure neglect. At the moment, we doubt that the destroyed facility will be saved. If more fires happen, it will go down with its layers of history, a reminder of the area's industrial heritage gone. Here are some of our photographs captured at the abandoned mill. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page where we share images from our explores months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. This is the last full video we will be uploading in 2021. We hope that you enjoyed the many interesting explorations we have posted in the last 12 months. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See you next time.